Welding with Children is a humorous slice of life tale penned by Tim Gatros. Originally featured in The Atlantic magazine in 1997, it later found its place in a short story collection bearing the same name. Gatros is a distinguished writer, boasting several accolades, including the 1999 Saba Book Award for his novel, The Next Step in the Dance, and the 1999 Southern Independent Booksellers Alliance Saba Book Award, for The Clearing. In 2005, he clinched the John Dos Passos Prize. The narrative revolves around Bruton, a blue-collar grandfather residing in a quiet Louisiana town. Bruton's life is filled with his four adult daughters, each raising a child on their own. One weekend, as Bruton's wife departs for the local casino, his four daughters converge on him, seeking his babysitting services. Reluctantly, Bruton agrees to look after his four grandchildren, Nunu, Moonbeam, Taminette, and Freddie, while striving to complete a welding project for his eldest daughter. The children's unruly behavior disrupts Bruton's work, as they tinker with his welding tools and the car parts scattered in his yard. Chaos ensues, Taminette unintentionally creates sparks with a grinder, and Moonbeam gives Bruton an electric shock with a rod holder. In a bid to restore order, Bruton sends the children outside, where they ingeniously fashion a swing from a discarded car engine hanging from a tree. He's embarrassed by the state of his yard and recognizes the safety risk posed by the swinging engine, prompting him to set aside his welding project to supervise the children closely. During these moments, Bruton reflects on his modest life and his brief encounter with college, where he felt the professors were subpar, leading him to abandon his pursuit of higher education. His time there taught him more about people's lack of care for one another than his chosen subjects. The children's demands for snacks prompt Bruton to load them into his car for a trip into town. Chaos reigns at the local supermarket as the children snatch items, yell, and dash through the aisles, provoking rude comments from the townsfolk regarding their absent fathers and lack of manners. This experience angers Bruton, even as he recognizes his own occasional tendency to pass judgment on others. He appreciates the community's watchful eye, despite its annoyances, compared to complete indifference. On the drive home, a child swears, prompting Bruton to pull over and reprimand them for their language, fearing they might sound like white trash. He questions where they learned such language. Back at home, Bruton inquires about the children's religious education, discovering they have little knowledge of God or the Bible. He decides to read them biblical stories, only to be interrupted by their questions making him realize their knowledge of Christianity is gleaned from movies and TV. Bruton briefly daydreams of escaping to the East Coast to escape his frustrating family, but he quickly abandons the idea, acknowledging that he can't leave his children and grandchildren, given his own role in shaping their lives. The following day, Bruton seeks advice in town on improving his grandchildren's behavior. He begins picking them up every Sunday to attend Sunday school and church together. He also cleans up his yard and workspace, selling car parts and scrap iron to the local salvage company. With his surroundings tidied up, Bruton feels ready for a fresh start. One of his daughters brings Nunu and Freddy over for a sleepover, and she shares that Nunu has spoken his first word, Dada. Bruton worries about Nunu's future, knowing that his biological father won't return. To provide some joy, they hang a tire swing where the derelict car engine once hung in the front yard. The story concludes with Freddy and Nunu happily playing on the swing, and even Nunu, despite his young age, can join in since he fits in the middle. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.